Good evening everyone, this is Ajay from EDS Technologies Marketing Team. I thank each and everyone for joining the webinar on competitive advantage from and advanced production for auto aerospace suppliers. I will start the presentation with a brief introduction about EDS Technologies and the presentation will be continued by Mr. Amitanjan Manaji about the solution of 3D experience solution engineered to fly. Coming to the brief introduction about EDH Technologies. EDH Technologies is a 21-year-old company which provides the solutions on engineering services as well as enterprise solutions, which is headquartered in Bangalore. We have total 12 locations with a direct presence and 200 plus associates and 1,500 plus live customers all over the India. We serve the different verticals from aerospace, automotive, transportation and mobility, energy, high-tech, life sciences, and various industries. We have the strategic partner of Lazo Systems and SAP Human Solutions. We provide the data, cloud data solutions as well with Ziva and Netlink. Amit? Hello, Amit? Yes, yes, can you hear me? Uh, Amit, you can carry on with the presentation. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so let me just start sharing my screen. Have, have you made me the presenter so that I can uh, share my screen? Yeah. Okay. So can you confirm once uh, you're able to see my screen, then I can yeah. get started. Uh, your oh, screen is visible to us. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Ajay uh, and Venkat um, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone, for you know joining this webinar. I know it's a working day and it's almost uh, past four o'clock um, in the mid middle of the week. So you know, I really appreciate your commitment to to join this webinar. Um, so, as as Ajay um, pointed out, we will be you know um, looking going over a solution, which we call it Engineer to Fly, uh, which is focused uh, to the application of you know 3D experience um, solution. Um, Ajay, uh, can you please mute uh, yourself and others uh, so that there is no disturbance, and maybe okay, fine. Um, you know, we'll, um, how, how the 3D experience solution it can be used by the aerospace supplier in in, in improving um, their their efficiency, their their ROI, and their business. Um, so that is going to be the key key topic in next uh, you know one hour or so. Um, I'll, I'll I'll go over the solution, give you some background, and then you know we'll we'll show you the the product, um, some videos to associated with it. And then we can have some, uh, you know, uh, short time for some questions and answers. If you have any, uh, you can keep, you know, typing in the chat window. And then if the time permits, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go over those questions. And at least if I'll try my best to answer those. Uh, if not, I will I'll get back. Uh, okay. So we'll, we'll get started. So this is, you know, going to be the, the uh, kind of agenda for this uh, uh, for this webinar, I'll start with a quick company overview, telling about the source systems, uh, what we do, what we are in, and then we'll come to the solution briefing, uh, engineer to fly, and then we'll go over the product demo. Uh, I have to just just to show you the sample scenario, how the things will uh, you know work in, in in real life, and then as I mentioned, we, if we have time, we can go over some question and answers. I try to keep it crisp, and um, hope you find it interesting. Okay, um, the so solution, the so systems. Our company. Um, I'm, I'm sure you know most of you will be you know using our product in some form or other. Uh, but just to set the perspective, we call ourselves a scientific company. Around you know 14,000 passionate people, people working across the world, more than 200,000 enterprise customers, and and around you know 12,600 partners uh, who are who are 
you know domain experts in their in their own fields and EDS uh, being one of the you know key uh, partners uh, with with whom we work in India we have a long term relationship and and we are a long term driven you know organization you can see from our you know financial reports and everything that the key uh, you know, differentiator of the SAW system is, you know, around 40% of our revenue is invested back in the R&D, you know, in, in research and development. You know, every moment our 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 team is working on bringing out, you know, new new innovations, you know, new uh, new solutions which can, you know, help uh, make your life easier, our customers' life easier. All right. So that was a brief introduction. Um, this is our, you know, clientele. So. Uh, I'll just you know leave this slide for a few seconds so that you you see you know all the industry leaders who are at the heart of innovation in in different fields are using our product in some way or other, and and they are, they they form our esteemed uh, customer list. Okay, um, now I'll I'll shift my focus a little bit to to the concept of 3D experience. You know. Um, we, we we have been using v4s v5s and different versions and then there's a you know emergence of of 3d experience so at the outset before i introduce a solution or before I, I i discuss about anything i want to just give you a perspective of of 3d experience uh, platform you know what 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 we are aiming at and and what we you know intend to do for your for our end users okay so you know traditionally we have been uh, been, been uh, software vendors uh, primarily CAD, you know, Katia is our flagship product. It needs no introduction, particularly in the field of aerospace and, and defense. Um, SolidWorks, uh, you know, is, is our, our another CAD product in, in, in the PLM world. You know, um, Innovia, PLM uh, has, has been a flagship product. Um, virtual reality, Telmia. So we have been, you know, working, you know, making your lives easier by providing software uh, products. Um, focused on particular business uh, business needs okay then you know we, we we thought we will go one step forward where we started working um, uh, working with different industries right uh, primarily aerospace and defense that's that's where our legacy comes from the sub aviations uh, transportation mobility industrial equipments so what we did going forward was not to restrict ourselves just by providing a, a, a CAD software which is uh, based on its function and features, but we started to embed the typical business processes that you follow, you know, day in day out as part of our solution, right? So that you you have more ready to use package, right? So that, for example, you know, if if you're an automotive supplier, your APQB processes, right? We can why don't why can't we have that em embedded in the in the system, you know, as a as 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 an aerospace uh, you know supplier, uh, what about your um, you know uh, the the the, uh, the the stringent regulatory requirements? You know, AS 9100. You know, all this kind of uh, basic requirements which you you know work day in and day out. Why can't we have it imbibed within our solutions, right? So that we, we you, it can make your life more easier. You find more use out of the tool. So that is where we started focusing on you know different industry solutions. And one of them being engineered to fly, that is what I'm going to present uh, you today, right? And then it came the power of the 3D experience uh, platform. So when I say platform, what we are trying to do is integrate all the business processes, all your software solutions, all, all the you know, process people and product on a common platform. You know, so that with, with, with a common and uniform user interface, so that all your you know all all your processes all your um, you know execution starting from the ideation to the obsolescence of a product is maintained on the same platform there is a single source of truth there's a traceability you know and and there is an easy reference to any data at any point of time okay so that in a nutshell is 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 our journey that we started from being just software vendors to the industry focus and then today at the 3d experience platform so coming uh, to the focus for aerospace and defense uh, uh, suppliers, right? So I wanted to highlight or, or you know discuss about the major challenges that are faced today. You know, of course, you guys are in the industry, you know it much better than I do. But I think you will agree with me in terms of technology, 
the major you know challenges that 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 are that are you know arriving or or taking their head up in in, in the market today is the the coming of the smart systems right so there are you know various integrated systems which high technological content so it's not only mechanical or it's not only electronic so it's becoming mechatronics right you know, systems you know from pipes only to we have you know electricals fluidics the structures you know it, it used to be you know from metallic only to all composites so there's a huge advan advancement of technology you know day in and day out okay and and that and that is one part of the story you know there are changes in the uh, happening in the business model as well so there are so much you know global operations none of the suppliers are restricted to a particular geography or a particular continent or or a particular country you know they are supplying you know products across the globe right and and, and this is creating a lot of consolidation uh, in in the in the supplier uh, phase uh, you know uh, area also supplier market also just to you know maintain the competitiveness to maintain the you know volume of uh, sales uh, there's this lot of uh, consolidation that is happening in in the supplier front then there's a you know risk sharing you know partner behavior the oems are put, pushing um, there's a lot of risk uh, out to the you know suppliers you know so that they they have to take in you know, a lot of ownership so it's not only the 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 transactional based things you know we want this product and you supply that product there's a lot of you know business models that are evolving where there is a risk sharing and and and, and it is not only an only a negative thing like you know your oems are putting pressure back on your suppliers but it this gives the scope for innovation you know this gives the scope for idea generation you know within uh, the supplier community which which can you know help a long way in, in in building a bond between your oems and suppliers right the then then the, there is a you know different business models like uh, uh, the 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 you know there is sometimes when there's a, a huge number of orders there's a peak level where a high and low production level has to be you know managed so there's lot of challenges this kind of challenges in terms of technology and kind of business knowledges that uh, business models that that today's uh, suppliers are facing okay so this is just you know some of the high uh, level challenges so what a suppliers need to do today is i think the primary three focus areas we have to win more and more businesses right you have to win more and more businesses to be to be in the race you know to be uh, more successful and and to to have more you know top line and bottom line fast roi on the technological investment so if you are investing on a solution per se per se 3d experience or katia or anything you should have a fast return on investment and you should be able to drive higher margin you know that is these are the three areas where where we try to address uh, in terms of our solution okay so in terms of you know at at a very high level uh, uh, pyramid of of the different suppliers uh, and the oems the relationship i think you you know it better than me uh, at the at the top level are the oems right and then there are uh, you know uh, the, the 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 original uh, of course the oems and then the you know propulsion engine and those suppliers direct suppliers as we call it tier 1 tier 2 suppliers and then there are tier 3 and tier 4 suppliers and then at the bottom level is the is the raw material and the engineering offices so of course you know the pyramid shows the number of players in this tier 3 tier 4 and the uh, this this last two you know sections are more and that is where our solution is is primarily targeted so engineer to fly is is for targeting this tier 3 and tier 4 um you know suppliers um so i i keep getting questions uh, you know from from the supplier community that oh oh the south 3d experience solution is only for oems it's for airbus it's for boeings you know it, it it's for av it is the south aviation is there's, there's nothing for us um i want to break that myth in in next um, half an hour or 45 minutes just to give you a glimpse that you know our solution is focused and meant for uh, as much as for the oems as as much as it, it is for you okay so i i hope you know as we uh go down the presentation you will find it more uh helpful so what what are the business values you know as i as i clearly uh mentioned you your organization should be driven by three key business values for you to adopt the solution you have to we have the hunger or the focus for winning more businesses you should be focused on increasing the gross margin and you should be uh, looking at a fast roi on your technological investment so what is engineer to fly um so engineer to fly is a collection of uh, following uh, 
processes or business processes or the or the solutions so first is the first area where we focus on is you know improving the uh, bidding process so if i say you know improving the bidding process i what i uh, want to say is you know by this you know you can we can help companies to move from um, you know just an ad hoc to a repeatable process for their you know bidding management so this solution improves the bid quality by reusing the existing projects and standard processes and drive bid in a compliance through a strong management of rfp requirements so it's not that every time you get an rfp and you start you know reinventing the wheel you should have some standard templates which you can you know reuse and most of the you know structure and the template is ready so that your bid management process starting from capturing of the requirements to the uh, you know the 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 uh, the response to it you know how uh, the feasibility the the cost analysis uh, the all kind of risk analysis you know that should follow a structured approach for you know uh, responding to your uh, bidding process okay and the next part is once your bid is awarded or once you go your uh, you know get your uh, project you know you have to be you know as9100 uh, compliant there is there's no uh, choice right so we can enforce you can use this solution to enforce those uh, those standards you know through the standard processes you know we can drive the you know project execution through the collaborate collaboration and optimize the resource allocation to different projects so that you know in addition we want to improve the way the the, the companies like you are managing their work packages and of course the product configurations okay so that is uh, the, the the key message where we say you know, we try to execute on target and then comes the, the the optimizing the manufacturing process and through through a digital continuity so all your you know uh, machine components composite components sheet metal components mold tool, tooling engineering system equipment engineering so all these things are part of your same platform so there is a digital continuity from the you know uh, rfp stage to the execution stage you know to to your you know design engineering all the way down to the manufacturing so one of the main challenges for you know a build to print company is to you know adapt quickly to customer production production rate you know your tag time and everything so what engineer to fly helps is for customers like you to improve your operational efficiency uh, you know through an increase in the industrialization robustness and so that you have a full in you know, a control of the production flexibility so we'll, we'll we'll go through the steps you know how how you can from your engineering bomb you can you know generate your manufacturing bomb and then you can you know define uh, your routing and then you know loading work uh, loading of your you know work ben benches and and every step when you're you know, generating sub assemblies you can get a 3d view live on the system and and you can ensure that all your requirements with, and your, your manufacturing is done in sync with your requirements you're compliant with all the uh, you know customers uh, uh, the, the the requirements that are specified in this specification and last but not the least you know first uh, finally each supplier needs to have an you know efficient way to manage their quality process right so to support your audits so we can you know define a solution to support uh, internal and external audit and uh, and improve your overall quality management system since you know again it all sits on the same platform and, and and the the quality team the manufacturing team the design team the business development team everyone is looking at the same uh, data they're looking at the same you know as we call it quote unquote you know single source of truth right so what is the unique value that we deliver in in a nutshell so we give you know digital uh, continuity so we have integrated value streams for design engineering through my manufacturing that you, you use the best in class engineering tools which is integrated with your quality and simulation management in a controlled environment right so i want to stress on the fact that the environment is controlled it's not lying somewhere on your ftps or some shared folders you know where 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 the data is compromised sometimes and we don't even know which is the latest version you know there's a there's a there's a, there's a confusion of you know which is the drawing that your supplier is using or there's confusion which is the drawing your manufacturing using you know there so we we have a control environment which is access controlled and and which always gives you the latest version of the data right on at your fingertip right the next piece is driven and controlled execution so at any point of time you get a live status of all your current proposals 
and your projects that are getting executed. So there's a drive on execution of the project in a connected way. So all your key business uh, units or business departments are connected in a secure environment. You can even collaborate if you're custo with your customers in a secure environment if you, if you, if you, if you will right and and overall it brings that operational efficiency your total cost of ownership uh, has is, is reduced and there is because there's a reusable there's a lot of focus on reusability so be it starting from your proposal templates to your automatic routing or the tracking of all data design data manufactured components tooling data so there is since everything is on the same platform it's a system dependent not dependent on any individual so there is a high percentage of reuse that is happening uh, you know which which drastically brings your uh, you know total cost of ownership right so that is where you know the key values that that we are uh, proposing so if, if you look at my um, screen now what what we see is a, is a typical you know manufacturing process for your OEM or the tier tier one suppliers you know where, where they start with the proposal phase then you know they, they award a project and then starts with the conceptual design and the preliminary design and and the detailed process of uh, you know doing a critical design fabrication assembly you know different inspections the gates they are the first article in inspection, testing, verification, uh, you know, then, then finally, there's, finally there's end of life and disposal, right? In this whole scheme of things, the, the supplier, you know, comes at, at, at a stage, um, you know, somewhere where the preliminary design is happening, you know, uh, in, in most cases, there's some, there might be some deviations, but mostly, you know, during the concept initiation, then the project approval, preliminary design. So if, if you look at this, you know, this is uh, very much, uh, uh, the the supplier product life cycle starting from the planning define architecturing uh, product process then integrating this this has been you know highly heavily borrowed from the automotive industry of the, the process of APQP so if you see my screen the, the the first step is to planning and defining then our, then product design process design then all all those you know steps in, involved in this process so if you, if you see the, the the sorry the product design development process design development and and all the steps so there there are a number of uh, you know uh, things which happen in parallel starting from your you know bidding your sourcing procurement then your requirement analysis functional system architecture physical architecture you know as we call it the rflp process the requirement functional then the logical and the physical architecture the detailed product engineering tooling you know manufacturing so when you have a solution which is which is you know encompassing all these uh, the activities that you do for a particular product it brings immense value and and you know improves your uh, uh, productivity to to, to, a, to a large extent okay so just to give you a glimpse how the engineer to fly cover the the supplier uh, introduction plan so it can you know it's as i mentioned it starts with the project awarding or improving the the bidding process so the highlighted section if you see the the bidding process you know how you um, capture customer requirements how you bid to a particular you know project how you you know analyze analyze the requirements uh, so that you are able to you know uh, track and trace and satisfy each of them all the way down to the manufacturing uh, uh, details right this is where the solution uh, helps in uh, you know tracking executing on target uh, this is where the focus is on implementing the integrated governance solution so generating your you know enterprise bill of materials your programs your excuse me your, your project executions and the entire governance around the um, uh, entire governance around the uh, to, to the delivery of the uh, product and of course you know this is where our key area is you know uh, all the as I mentioned the RFLP process the system architecture tooling the manufacturing process so and and we have a digital continuity starting from the design to the engineering to the manufacturing okay so these are the key areas where um, engineer to fly uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a high level addresses your your problems okay so you know enough of you know theory we we, we i presented what the solution is um what we uh, uh, address what are the key values so as a next step what i would you know want to take you through is uh, the um, the 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 solution how it looks uh, in, in a video so that in step by step i can show you the process you know how to you know improve the bidding
uh, then how to you know implement the integrated governance then how you can optimize the manufacturing process through the digital continuity and of course you know at the core of it the quality the support for audit okay so let me just change my screen here So as a, as a first step, uh, you know, of the um, uh, solution, so we will look at, uh, you know, a proposal manager, you know, maybe a, someone who is uh, responding to the, who is responsible for uh, responding to the RFP. Uh, you know, this can be your business development manager or someone who is taking care of the proposal. So his responsibility is, you know, to, is, is to manage all the RFPs, prepare the proposal and satisfy the prospects while ensuring profit margins are met. And then, you know, the details uh, he has to coordinate is, is the quotations, uh, engineering team working in you know, a multiple uh, spread out functions and then the, he has to oversee the preparation of the proposal so that you know the the prospects of the customers are provided with the cons consistent and a comprehensive answers to their uh, request and their and he has to, and his, his key kpis would in, in, include for example defining a repeatable process improving the quality of the bid the manage the bid compliancy so that it's compliant with uh, all the processes and ensure that you know there's a continuity to the execution phase now this is very important so that whatever you responded to the RFP when you resp uh, when you actually deliver the product there should be a continuation there should be uh, you know that the, the entire thing should be in sync okay so this is how the system is you know it's a browser based solution you log in so at any point of time you can go to a high level program where you can look at the different RFPs you know that are um, going on in the in the organization from the right hand side dashboard in your screen you can see what are the pending tasks what are the pending deliverables corresponding to each of the rfps you know what are the issues that are going on in the in the organization so you get a, a single uh, you know level view of the details of where each rfp is standing okay then you can get go into the detail of a particular uh, rfp so for example here this is an rfp for a uh, responding to a rear exhaust uh, assembly okay so you at any point of time you can in the context of an rfp project you have the details of all the contents that are shared by the customer so if you see my screen at this point of time we are downloading the word document or the specifications that are provided by the customer so if you have a you know word word file where you have the detailed uh, specifications of the requirement given by the customer through our requirement capture tool you're, you can integrate it with microsoft uh, uh, word and you can directly import all your requirements to this to the platform by single click of uh, command and then you can you know define uh, each requirement as a, in a unique identification with a unique identifier and then you can define the classification in terms of their priority in terms of their difficulty in terms of you know what kind of classification whether it's functional non-functional constraints and this kind of thing so what you have done is uh, maybe a, a semi-structured or unstructured word document has been converted into a structured requirement where you have you know the general instructions and uh, the, the specific requirements and you have a compliance matrix associated with it like your solution whether meets those requirements or not so that kind of a traceability you have now uh, defined uh, for your uh, responding to your RFP so next key thing is the execution so you would have a standard template based uh, approach where you respond to an RFP you can get different views where you can you know see whether what status it is in you have the checklist to make sure that you know most of the content if it's uh, for a similar product is is reused so there is a checklist uh, you know for 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 different uh, teams uh, different uh, uh, functions to see and look and verif uh, verify uh, you know and then only it can move to the uh, next step right and then then you have to submit the proposals in volume so you have different volumes like say you know the the cost data or the you know the contracts informations response requirements so within the solution you can create 
different um, vo different kinds of um, you know volumes and then if through a content uh, report you can always have a look whether all the related um, content is has been um, put there or has been released or not okay so in a nutshell for a uh, a person who is you know looking at the you know proposal uh, he he is able to capture all the requirements in a structured format he is able to uh, you know define a template based uh, you know work way down structure for responding to the rfps and he is able to track the deliverables for all the each and every task that is you know defined in the uh, uh, that, that that you have defined as part of responding to the rfp right so you know, of course, assuming um, all this good work has paid off and you have uh, finally won the project, then it comes uh, to the you know proper execution of the project. And and this is a very very key function. It has to be you know executed on time, on budget, and without compromising on the uh, quality. So all these three parameters and many more parameters will be playing against each other to 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 you know hold you down. But it has to be um, completed. Uh, and and uh, within time budget and meeting the quality requirements right so what these things will do is primarily is is to enforce the as 9100 execution drive project collaboration because collaboration is is key here because multiple teams will be working together on the project resource allocation has to be optimized because you know you will, would have your engineers or different team members working on different projects parallelly and and you know you have to have proper utilization so that no, none of the projects are impacted and then of course uh, you have to manage the work packages for your product configuration right so we will just go into the details just give me one second i think i clicked back okay yeah so in the same uh, way like we had the rfp programs we can have you know ace 9100 uh, programs for different multiple projects for multiple customers so you can define programs for multiple um, you know scenarios so for this example what we will have is as i mentioned let's say we are measuring manufacturing a rear exhaust for a101 uh, and and then you know this is again the same project template from same the project uh, dashboard where you can see the progress at various level you know from the scheduling of the status in terms of the schedule status and the business status status is associated with the project in terms of critical task remaining deliverables gan chart views budget uh, budget view so at any point of time you get a real-time view of the project what is going on okay so key thing here in the project management is the uh, concept of associating deliverables so for each and every uh, you know task that you have in in the project you will always have a uh, deliverable that is associated with it this is unlike any project management solution the that you would have used maybe you know ms project or any other tool you can do the um, scheduling part of it resource allocation part of it but tracking the deliverables that is not possible any in any other solution so you you track your deliverables in the solution and as your deliverables get you know completed released or worked upon your task automatically gets completed so we call this you know invisible governance so as a project manager there is a minimum amount of follow-up that you need to do for each and every activity and even as a project member there's a minimum amount of reporting that you need to do at your manager so if you're using the system if you're doing real time at any point of time if you log into the system you get the real time status so in this example let's say you know validating of a technical specification is a work work uh, is, is a task that someone is working on right and it has a deliverable like technical specification that needs to be delivered so if you see my screen so once this is completed if you see this document technical specification someone has worked on and it gets released so what happens in the you know bigger scheme scheme of things the manufacturing preparation if you look at the task as validate technical specification that gets automatically completed right and at any point of time you can look at as, as a project manager you can look at the deliverable report okay for this particular task what status is is my deliverable whether it's completed or not who is the owner so there is a detailed traceability of each and every uh, task activity with its associated deliverables you get a you know phase gate view as i was mentioning you get a gan chart view so you can you know track the uh, times you get a checklist for every uh, phase 
uh, you know at, at at every gate so that you ensure that whenever your product moves from you know let's say manufacturing preparation to assembly to any state in its in its life cycle it meets all the all the required uh, criteria right other than that it is not allowed to move forward so you know at for 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 execution of the project you can track your um, you know risks and issues also associated with the particular um, project right so then then the other key important thing comes is in terms of the resource planning right so as i mentioned this the the manufacturing engineers let's say NC, nc programmers they'll be working on multiple projects so this will system will give you the 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 view of the resource allocation at a company level you will be able to see you know how much my each uh, resource is loaded in terms of you know uh, requirement uh, versus the supply you know a person x or person y whether that person is uh, loaded what is the resource demand what is the uh, you know projects that they, they, that they are assigned and at any point of time the single click you can you know generate charts and get the reports so this is a very convenient tool in in terms of project management in terms of resource management uh, you know at any point of time you are able to get the uh, real time view of what the uh, status is then you can you know organize your work packages uh, in, in in terms of uh, the, the specifications and the contents all your reference documents so each work packages can be um, in consolidated and they can be mapped to your requirements so what happens a particular work package will satisfy you know these 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 requirements and these requirements functional non functional uh, constraints you know that level of um, a deep deep dive in you, you can do and then of course is is the uh, bill of materials so for each package what is your engineering bill of material the definition you get a tree view you can expand all the way you know down to uh the 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 lowest uh, level okay so so far you know before i move into the the optimizing of the manufacturing process so what we have seen is you know in terms of the uh, project governance right so you can define as a project template uh, you you can define your as 9100 uh, standards you can do your resource allocations you can uh, you know you can you can, you can, you can define uh, a, a framework essentially where you know different um, functions in your organization collaborate to take your um, product development further right so now uh, we have we have embarked on the project uh, the engineering bill of material your design activity is is complete now next key thing is to optimize the manufacturing process right so manufacturing pro process you know the 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 key uh, activity a manufacturing engineer would would do is uh, he would look at several scenarios to optimize the industrialization process so that you know in in order to be compliant with the customer needs for example in terms of tax rate and other, other other information right finally you know you have to deliver the work instructions to to and, and then he has to you know deliver the work instruction to the shop floor so that ensure that a good production is is uh, you know done at at a quality uh, by by maintaining the required quality levels right so first step of the industry industrialization process is to you know generate your manufacturing bomb for the from the engineering bill of materials so at any point of time you can directly generate your you know engineering bill of materials and then you can you know define the uh, routings as 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 we will we'll see and then you can you know define all the associated processes of loading assembly building at at and at every point of time you can look at the 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 intermediate assembly that is getting generated and and then you know tooling will be part of the of the process and you can still look at the same um, you know view within that same 3d view you can look at the tooling whatever is is required then you can you know generate uh, 2d drawings because in you know, essentially 2d is the language that you have to speak to your end suppliers uh, with and and then finally you know preparing the work instructions for the uh, on field people Uh, who will be you know di directly using uh, and, and 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 you can make it actually a uh, uh, instead of a word work instru uh, instruction a live 3d work instruction where you can give you know annotations and other things okay so we will we'll, we'll go through the process you know once uh, as a as a manufacturing Uh, engineer so manufacturing engineer uh, you know the same work package the same work folders you know that were that were defined will be visible and you can uh, look at the 3d model view you can look uh, at the um, 
uh, these specifications at this on the same uh, turntable you can get the same structured view of the specifications or the requirements and then you know go through each of the requirements in terms of the, the functional areas bead strength tightening you know fixation assembly uh, you know all all, all the all, all all the detailed requirements so whichever is needed particularly for manufacturing right and then he can look at the assembly line uh, let's say it's a, it's a turbo fan that is uh, getting manufactured so he can look at the assembly line uh, different workstations you know what's um, what is the load so he you, you get uh, using the delmia view you can get the uh, you know detailed view of the assembly uh, you, you can you can see the manufacturing bill of material the manufacturing you know, uh, uh, bill of material where you're you know, defining all the components and all the you know routing processes, and and you know, on a click you get the three D view right there. Okay, and and as the manufacturing progresses, you can you can look at the status at each workstation, what is happening, and where the you know final assembly is happening, where the integration is ha happening. So if you see my screen, loading is happening here, welding is happening here. You know, these are the associated processes. Uh, for the for the manufacturing so once you have you know defined uh, these parameters next you can look at what is the uh, you know rate at which you are producing of course your your rate of production should meet the requirement of the uh, customers so what the solution gives you is a, a gantt chart view of each and every activity what is the time what is the utilization of each each workstation and then you can you know play with this uh, interactive uh, gantt chart to define uh, you know uh, how how what is the extent to which you can uh, load a workstation or reduce the you know load so you can you can actually do a workload balancing so if you see in this view what is happening is for each uh, workstation there are different workloads and then um, if you, if you if you if you will for a certain uh, parameters based on that you can you know change the uh, workloads right so as as i was telling uh, the tooling you know optimizing the tooling process the tooling itself um, is is part of the you know same flow on the same platform same solution so at any point of time you can you know uh, open the tooling um, assembly uh, and, and and take a, a deeper view uh, into into in, into that so what will happen now if you see uh, it will go directly to the manufacturing uh, flow and we'll look at the you know tooling assembly it will be opening in a separate um, window uh, okay so if, if you see here the the station for tooling is, is is focused here and what what we are doing here is we are putting some additional um, comments we are generating the the 2d data uh, which will be you know used which can be used by your uh, suppliers uh, for, for for producing the tools <clears throat> so it has all the you know details uh, of the tooling so as we move on the next piece is is generating the um, the work instructions so this is the next uh, key thing this is you know for 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 the manufacturing engineer to ensure that the linkage is all the way to the shop floor also so this this allows you to you know define different work instructions from each individual operations at an each individual operation you can define the work instruction it's uh, is 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 uh, this instructions can be directly defined on the 3d by adding you know annotations instructions pictures you know these kind of uh, tools you know this is a facilitator to um, manage the updates basically and and each work instruction can be easily exported to the uh, shop floor okay and then here you can see actually these are again mapped to the particular requirements the last point is to be sure is along this you know industrialization process that 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 we followed yeah, we have consumed all the rec manufacturing requirements at the level of the you know operation so for each requirement i should be able to you know specify the usage like controlled or realized right so all of these can be directly consumed inside the work instruction so if you see my screen this is the work instruction that is generated with the pictures with the images with the annotations you know this is this is really uh, detailed 
okay so coming to the you know, last piece of the of the puzzle that is you know implementing the the quality piece of it uh, having an integrated support for audit so for an in a quality manager it's it's uh, it's very important that they ensure that all the processes in the quality management system are defined implemented and respected right so they, they need to report to the top management uh, for the qms performances so there should not be any quality uh, slippages and this is this is very key for the uh, uh, for an organization they should be able to uh, uh, support internal and external audit and of course you know improve the process at at every state so what we will what will happen here is you know the the quality manager also logs in looks at the same work packages so at any point of time they are able to go deep deep down to the planning level for each work project for each uh, work package they can define external audits or the internal audits so they can also define templates for audits so similar way we, we created project templates for rfps we created project templates for execution you know quality can define work, uh, you know templates for uh, carrying on internal and, and external audits so that they have also a controlled uh, flow so for each um, each work package they they are they are able to go down to the level of each changes whatever changes are coming uh, what are the you know uh, associated change orders what are the associated specifications which are the associated uh, specifications um, uh, and which requirements got updated so at any point of time they get an you know summary report on what status uh, those these changes are how were they implemented and they have audit trails for for each and every change order or for that matter any object or specification like what was added what was removed who had checked out who had checked in so it's, it's very easy for them to you know trace and and justify then they can do a you know, detailed unit unit uh, tracking uh, for all the uh, packages and um, you know uh, the the other key important thing is the issues so there is a formal way of tracking and uh, tracing all the issues uh, in, during the project and you know this this helps in uh, uh, getting the management focus or the organization focus on resolving which is the priority what are the um, you know key issues and and, and then, then prioritize and the allocate resources for their resolution so you get a you know dynamic dashboards in terms of you know issues in terms of priorities states and uh, problem types and you know it's a click and um, refresh so you, you can click on the any any uh, particular status that you want to see and the page gets refreshed right so issue management having a quality things and then you have the quality documentations the qms uh, as we call quality documents starting from your uh, standard operating procedures inspection plans um, you know uh, sops you know, these kind of controlled uh, documents which you know you, you users can need to have trained on and they have to follow a uh, written a document retention period so all those things can be maintained as part of the uh, uh, quality module so for example, you know, in my screen, if you look at, we will open an, um, let's say inspection plan. Um, so if you see my screen, that my periodic reviews inspection plans, you know, this can be periodically reviewed and at any point of time, you can see uh, what status it is in. And in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, what, what changes it had, which issues, uh, you know, related to its creation, who are the people who need to be trained in this and what is the training status at any point of time you look at this percentage complete you know these 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 people need to complete these uh, documents training uh, on, on so and so date right so this is what uh, in a nutshell what the uh, quality uh, function takes takes care of so just to um, summarize just give me one second i'll come back to the um, presentation So just 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 to summarize, so what we you know saw in in, in terms of the um, solution, uh, the first was to improve the bidding process. So what what we you know saw as a proposal manager, the person was able to submit an accurate RFP. You are able to answer and comply with all the requirements in a short time. 
okay short time is the focus because uh, you're reusing a lot of components you were able to uh, you know look at from learn from your previous experiences and you're you're following a formal tracking of the processes and it's all real time so you're doing everything in a very short time that that improves your uh, ability to respond quicker and that improves your ability to respond to more rfqs than you would do without such a uh, solution or without such a system right the next piece was to implement an integrated governance you were able to drive and control the execution of the project to deliver on time on budget and on target while being you know AS9100 compliant this is this is the key thing you know the de facto uh, for, for for your industry um, optimizing the manufacturing process through digital continuity so we were able to define and implement an industrialization process that meets the customer needs in terms of quality and delivery rate right we it, there was a digital continuity from your engineering data from your design data you were automatically able to generate your manufacturing bill of materials your tooling was uh, you know inbuilt your generation of your work instruction was on the same platform so everything was integrated and we had the digital continuity so there is no confusion on the on the uh, in, in, in terms of uh, you know which is the correct data whether this is the right version I'm using or not and and all those solutions and of course finally the backbone the, the key thing the quality the audit right so a quality manager is always able to check the compliance is able to always track what was changed why was changed and who has changed it, um, it and, and improve the quality management system to customer satisfaction right so this in a nutshell is what my engineer to fly is and this is my last slide and I'll, I'll stop on this um, what what just to give you a glimpse of you know who are the key suppliers who are using this solution and and based on the feedback that we got, got from them there has been an error reduction of 30 percent there's a reuse you know corporate rules and standard checking design right time first um, producibility constraints have been uh, in integrated so there has been a productivity enhancement of around 40 percent due to digital continuity reusing and automation and there's a reduction in change process uh, request of 40 percent because of course increased collaboration between disciplines they talk to each other there's a single source of truth there's no multiple versions of the drawing and the bill of material floating everywhere and early design optimization of course if you integrate all the disciplines design optimization is bound to happen much earlier in the life cycle so with that I'll pause here hand it over to um, Ajay or Venkat um, if any questions I would be happy to answer thank you uh, thank you Amit if you have any queries please uh, post your queries in the chat box or raise your hand so that Amit can answer your queries here If not, there's no need to come up with the questions right now. You know, you can always reach out to us. Um, of course, you have EDS contact. You can reach out to them. You can reach out to me any point of time. I'll be, you know, more than happy to respond to your queries, engage with the discussion with you, you know, look into your, you know, individual processes, how we can optimize, how we can work together. Uh, Amit, we have a query from Mr. Nagarajan. He's asking that, is there any programmatic way to access the 3D experience Novia portion? I, I didn't get the question so you mean is there a programmatic way to access the Inovia portion? portion so so all our solutions as, as I showed you are modular okay let me get this thing uh, clarified so it's not that when you buy an engineer to fertilize solution you have to get the Delmia piece you have to get the manufacturing piece you have to get the project management piece no it, it is it is all together packaged that needs meets your uh, need end to end but each of the modules are are are, are individually uh, usable so if a 3d experience uh, innovia piece is more relevant to you at this point of time yes that can be used on 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 its own okay if today you're not ready for the entire solution if the innovia project management or the data management piece is of your primary importance you can start with that module okay if tomorrow you plan to you know get all the solutions together it's just a module that gets added on top of it so that is the beauty of the of having the platform you know, it's just like your iOS or Android you know you, you you have your phones platform you use the apps that you need to 
okay i hope i was i was clear uh, no, the other part of the question was ah. basically to yes. try to get yeah can you hear me amit yes i i can hear you please go ahead yeah so the other part of the question was like how do we uh, programmatically interact with these sessions to um, um, kind of do a interaction right so back and forth uh, transferring the data or whatever so is there an api exposure or something through which we can connect to the system at the back end yes 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 so there are you know multiple ways of connecting to the system uh, if, if i go into little te technological terms um, we, we we support you know web services you know that's just uh, so sos or service oriented architecture so with with web services you know it 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 can be any third party system that that can be connected uh, to the erp system um, sorry to to the novia system one very good example is uh, erp right so let's say you are having uh, many many organizations have their manufacturing bill of materials and the num number of transactions happening in the erp system be it sap be it oracle e business suits you know we can build an integration directly from uh, you know via based on web services or or based on you know xml or any, any kind of technology it's it's a, it's, a, it's an open platform to to do the uh, data exchange for example if you're uh, engineering bill of material is released it can automatically flow directly to the uh, erp system to generate the you know master Uh, part master and and then then generate the uh, manufacturing bill of materials so yes apis are exposed uh, web services based integrations and and it's a neutral uh, uh, platform it's an open platform as we call it 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 supports all the uh, uh, you know known uh, software uh, standards uh, for for data exchange okay because okay. uh, there are other legacy systems also that we want to connect so how do we get to know what uh, apis are exposed or to what extent or is there a documentation or something um yes there is a documentation but mostly it, it won't be in the in the in the uh, public domain so because it's uh, it, it, uh, documentation is there but it might not be in the uh, public domain right so okay. um depending on what kind of legacy system we have you have uh the partners uh, we we can investigate and and define uh, the you know way way we need to uh, communicate to those systems because it it largely depend on what kind of uh, legacy system it is you know whether it is a relational database or not whether it can you know read uh, from an intermediate database staging database or not or it can read from a file system xml files or not so there can be number of uh, ways it can it, it can be you know configured okay thank you okay yeah Uh, thank you very much and uh, amit we have one more query from mr satish was the manufacturing mm -hmm. process showcased in the part of delmi process after iso uh, what we showed was was not part of apriso uh, it was part of the traditional uh, delmi uh, but apriso has been very recently acquired and 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 we are actually working on uh, building that uh, integrating as part of our our solution okay so maybe later this year or uh, early next year we should have uh, a preso also uh, integrated uh, one more query from mr satish it is how much of the direct mobility support available for this solution okay uh, yeah so we we support all the mobile platforms uh, starting from you know ios and, and android uh, windows i'm not sure i think it's mostly ios and and android um uh, and and all the tablets also are supported so you know as long as your uh, uh, it all it needs is the internet connection so if your uh, if you if if your uh, you know network is is accessible through a vpn link or something from from your organization uh, most of the data can be viewed uh, on the on on the mobile platforms but of course we have what we have to understand is is the practical challenges of loading a you know full 3d data on on a mobile Uh, or a or a uh, or or an or a tablet, so it might have its own uh, limitations. Um, but but to uh, for, for for whether it's supported or not, uh, answer is yes, it is it is supported on iOS and Android platforms. And for this, hope you are very good. actually there is a 3d play app if you, if you if you go into um, you know play play store or or itunes you can actually look at the 3d play uh, app that can actually give you uh, a glimpse of how how the uh, you know the visualization the 3d visualization and everything everything works 
okay but but you know the delmia piece of it where you're doing the assembly processing work instructions uh, i think it, it it will be challenging to uh, uh, not very practical do it on a on, on a uh, mobile or, a, or or an ipad tablet okay And thank you, Fitish. Another query from Mr. Nagarajan: Will there be will there be an overlap of Delmia and Appraiser functionalities? Um, I am not aware at this point of time. But uh, yes, there, there will be an overlap of um, Appraiso and Elmia functionalities and, and primarily you know, around the area of uh, scheduling and, and other, other areas where, where I think Appraiso will be um, taking over and, and replacing some of the components. Uh, but at this point of time, it is, it's too early for me to uh, comment uh, anything. Um, but maybe whenever we do a next you know, session or a webinar, we, I can give you a more detailed um, view of that. Because the industry team is working on this, brand team is working on this, uh, how, how a Prezo can be integrated. Um, so, you know, keeping both the products sovereignty and they're getting merged. So very soon, you know, we will, we will ha have an update where, where we define which, uh, which, which areas, you know, strong areas of uh, both Delmia and, and a Prezo can be, can be used uh, together in unison. And next query is from Mr. Srinivas. He's asking, what is the typical uh, typical time required to implement on existing projects, and what is the training time? Okay, um, so this largely depends on the uh, size of the organization. Okay, so I I, I would um, on, on an average I would say uh, two to three months of time would would be you know a very um, conservative approach. Um, with with the involvement of the key business function key business functions right so you know we have to you know get your business processes mapped uh, the your specific requirements your specific approval processes and all you know setting up different in, in, in environments starting from qa dev testing uh, production right so around, around 2 to 3 months of time is is, is very important and, um, and 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 the training uh, of course i would say um, different approaches of training are actually uh, done uh, it, it can be it can vary from one one week to three weeks overall there is a concept of train the trainer so where where you know you you identify in your organization who are the key uh, champions for for this kind of an implementation and those four or five guys you know go through a rigorous training and then they start training the 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 end users so so what happens there is a lot of uh, a focus happening the, there is number of iterations that the training goes through and those champions are able to actually map your processes with the you know products processes so yeah a, a typical time frame to be uh, uh, specific will be some somewhere around two to three months for a mid-size uh, organization Amit one more query is that how about the difference or overlap with the intersim Can can you repeat that overlap with intersim? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not available. Uh, I'm not um, aware of this, so I will I will reserve my comments. But I'll can, can you just take a note and so that I can I can try yeah. to. Get some we will get back to you on this question on this query. And Mr. Nagaraj, we will be uploading the video of the. Entire webinar, we can you can go to the YouTube of EDST Technologies uh, uh, slash YouTube.com where you can get go and go get the complete webinar session. One last query from Mr. Satish. It is like how much of DevOps can be implemented means provisioning of this solution. Uh, did you say how much of the out of the box can be implemented or can you repeat your question how much of devops can be implemented you mean debugs debugging 
D V O P. Uh, I'm sorry. Sadish, I'm uh, uh, DevOps. Unmuting you. Can you please? So, uh, uh, my question was like, uh, how much of DevOps means like uh, how much of uh, how the solution can be auto provisioned? Uh, the total setup of the uh, uh, this 3DX solution, right? So, how much of it can be auto provisioned? Mm, in terms of uh, uh, setting up an installation, or in in terms of the yeah, setting uh, up to the execution, um, yeah, setting up. Uh, okay, uh, no setting up will 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 need lot of manual intervention. It 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 is like you know there's a, there's a process for uh, doing the installation because it it need a you know database setup. It will need some you know Apache. Uh, Tomcat is this kind of a setup, but once once the setup is done, uh, mostly for the day to day processes like you know the file server syncing, and then uh, uh, you know the 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 search index uh, setup, those things are, are pretty much automated. Okay, only for you know user user account setup and the approval process. Of course, those will need uh, manual intervention, but. Um, you know, as as part of the setup and installation is concerned, it would uh, it would need uh, I would say at this point of time a lot of man manual intervention. Uh, thank you everyone for joining the session. Mit, we are the winding up the session. Thanks for thank you for the giving the. Thank you, thank you everyone. Yeah, and thank you so much. If you have any more queries, you can write to us at marketing at edstechnologies dot com and. Uh, we will be uploading the session and we will come back to you with the personalized demonstration or the if you want the solution to in your office location we will be much more than helpful to you thank you everyone for joining